Good morning students. Welcome back to Leela Studio. Today we are going to discuss about embryo sexing. So what do you mean by embryo sexing? Embryo sexing is a process of determining the sex of the fetus before the development stage or you can say it is the development or you can say it is determination of the fetus during early embryonic development. So why you need to know what is the sex of the fetus, developing fetus, right? So this is because in the uh, animal biotechnology, we require more amount of livestock to be improved or the developed either in case of commercial way or in case of reproductive way. So here you require only the female animals for the reproduction and also for the milk production. So here after in vitro fertilization, when you have to introduce that fertilized embryo into the fetus of the surrogate animal, you need to know whether it is male or the female because in animal biotechnology, we require only the most of the female progeny in order to commercialize, right? So here, let us see how you are going to determine the sex of that developing fetus at the early stage. So here you can see at the early stage, the fetus is still ball-like structure where it is simply having the blastomere cells, right? Or you can say the mass of cells. In the first step, you have four steps. First is isolation of the embryo. Second step is isolation of embryonic DNA. Third step is amplification of the DNA and next is identification of the sex using probes. <coughs> so here you can see in the first step that is isolation of the DNA it is the collection. In the collection simply you are going to collect the embryos. From where you are going to collect? If it is in vitro fertilization that means the fertilization has occurred in the petri plate in the lab. So here you are going to take those embryos and know whether it is a female progeny or it is going to develop into a male progeny. We require only the female, right? So for that, we are going to collect that embryo if it is in vitro fertilization and then you are going to select the embryos based on the grading, either it is a grade 1 or grade 2 based on their health condition or the development condition, right? Then it is the micro manipulation. So micro manipulation when they do, if there is any genetic defect, we can micro manipulate with the help of micro injections, right? Then you can uh, grow them in the lab. Then you can go for the aspiration of the blastomere cells or the mass of cells. So here you can see the mass of cells which are present are undifferentiated cells. That means they have not got differentiated or they have not attained any function. Once they get differentiated, they develop into different parts of the animal, right? So here the undifferentiated blastomere cells are collected and they are washed with KCL solution. Then coming to the next step, it is isolation of the embryonic DNA. So here in the, now we have the cells. Now from the cells, you are going to isolate the DNA. So these are the cells. From the cells, you uh, to the cells, you are going to add proteinase K and the lysis buffer. Why are you adding this lysis buffer and proteinase K? In order to lyse the cells which are present and extract the nucleus. Because we want only the DNA which is present in the nucleus. So here, layer them with the mineral oil so that there will not be any evaporation during heat treatment. Okay? So after layering with the mineral oil, you are going to stir the, or incubate them at 37 degrees centigrade for 10 to 60 minutes. After that, you are going to inactivate. Now, the cells are glyzed. Okay, you don't want any further action of your protein SK. So, what you are going to do? You are going to inactivate protein SK by heat treatment. Then, you are going to store the sample at 4 degrees centigrade. Right? Coming to the third step. It is amplification of the DNA. So now you have isolated the embryo. Then from that you have taken the cells and from the cells you have isolated the DNA. After isolation of the DNA, that small amount of DNA may not be sufficient. Right? May not be sufficient. So what you are doing? You have to increase the number of 
copies of the DNA. That is nothing but amplification of the DNA. So where you are going to do that? You are going to do that in thermocycler where it will be running for 25 to 35 cycles. So that you get more number of more copies of that particular DNA. So if suppose this is the DNA. Right? If suppose this is the DNA which has to undergo this amplification process. That process is also discussed already in polymerase chain reaction. Right? PCR technique. So then first step is denaturation, annealing and extension. So one cycle is these three. Once we run denaturation, annealing and extension, it is one cycle. That means you have to run this thermocycler for 25 to 35 cycles. So let us see. Denaturation means the isolated DNA will be heat treated in order to denature. What do you mean by denature? Separation of two strands. Right? So double standard will be denatured to obtain a single standard DNA. Then it is annealing of the primers which is known as annealing process. Then it is extension of this forward and reverse primers in order to obtain four copies. Right? <clears throat> so from two you have obtained four copies. So like this, this one cycle will be repeated. Right? So that you will be repeating for 25 to 35 cycles in order to obtain more number of DNA. Right? So that is nothing but your amplification of DNA. And the last stage is <coughs> identification of the sex. Right? So now you have got the DNA. Now DNA consists of chromosomes. Right? In the female it is X and X whereas in the male the chromosomes are X and Y. Right? So here the common thing is X and X are common in both male and female progeny. What we want? We want only the female progeny. Okay? So here mostly this identification of the sex is done by using Y chromosome probes. Why you are using only the Y chromosome probes or Y specific probes? Because in both male and female progeny or the male and female DNA, the X is common. In female, you are having two X chromosomes, whereas in male, you are having Y chromosome. So, if you are using probes, probes are nothing but the small fragments which are, which can go and tap to the DNA, right? To the specific DNA. Why we are saying specific X specific probes? Because they will go and bind only to the X chromosome. Whereas Y specific probes, they will go and bind only to the Y chromosome. So here, in case of X and X, if I use this X specific probes, they go and bind to this DNA. If I use same X to XY chromosome also means, it, here you have X. So what happens? This will go and bind to X, right? So there is no difference in the test. You can't find out. So here you can observe if I am using the DNA, either it is a XX or the XY, that means a male or the female progeny. If I use the X specific probe, it will go and bind to the X. And here you will not get, you will get a positive test for X chromosome. That means X chromosome is present in both male and also the in the female. So here you can't determine the sex of the male or the female here because both consist of X probes, right? X DNA. Whereas here, in if you are using Y chromosome probe, right? Here it will be clear. If you are using Y chromosome probe, the Y chromosome is present only in the male progeny but not in the female, right? So here I am using Y specific probe to the DNA. So now here it will go and bind to the Y chromosome and this will be the confirmatory, right? If you are using XX chromosome, what happens? Here if you are using XX chromosome, your Y probe will not go and bind to any of the, right? So both they are X chromosomes. So Y specific probe will not go and bind. So you get the negative, right? Whereas here the X and Y, if you are using the Y, uh, y specific probe, that will go and bind to your Y chromosome, right? So, and this will be the positive test for Y chromosome.
and hence it it will be confirmatory test for the male progeny right if you want only the female you are going to reject these embryos and you are going to select the other embryos where you have got the negative if i am taking x and x here i'll get negative test right if i see in both the cases in determining the sex of male or the female i can use the y chromosome for confirmation if it is a positive test it is a male progeny if it is a negative test it will be the female progeny so like this i can confirm if i am using x specific probe i can't differentiate between the male and female progeny because both consists of x chromosomes so here further you have two other types of confirmatory test after confirming here either you go for the electrophoretic method for accuracy and also for the direct observation using uv right as the fluorescence increases you can say that it consists of more amount of that particular x chromosome if it is xy it will have increased fluorescence when you use x specific probe whereas here decreased fluorescence because it consists of only x probe right so here by this uh, technique you can analyze and say what is the sex of that developing fetus so in the development of the livestock we require only the female cattle to be more in number right for the sake of reproduction or for the sake of milk production then here you will be selecting all the embryos which are female and you will be then introducing that into the surrogate cattle animal in order to go for the production right so if you have any doubts in this topic please uh, text me and please do subscribe for further videos thank you